to our next presentation. Uh, I think my colleagues are going to set up here next to me, and we're going to be talking about additive manufacturing and how this reshapes everything, okay? Reimagine products, retool manufacturing, and rethink business. Now, additive manufacturing, I think most of you are familiar with. We have the additive manufacturing cube actually right behind us. Um, now, anything you can imagine nowadays, you can basically print, okay? Let's just think about a car, all right? If we think about everyday items, useful items. Um, but this also means that you have to change the way you think. And we have an expert here from California who will help you change the way you think. So let's give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Aaron Frankel. Thank you, Chris. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to Hanover Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We at Siemens believe that additive manufacturing reshapes everything. And we believe in creating new tools that enable us to design and to manufacture products that perform better than the way they do today. And we do this by combining the power of digitalization and additive manufacturing so that we can take ideas in our head, turn them into digital models that we can then manipulate in a digital world. We can simulate to the point of perfection, and when it's ready, we can turn it into atoms. But in order to achieve this, we all have to start to think differently in order to unlock the power of additive manufacturing. We have to reimagine the products that we're, we're familiar with on an everyday basis. We need to think a little bit more about the performance that we want to get out of products and understand that we're able to create new shapes with additive manufacturing that we cannot create with conventional manufacturing. And when we do that, we can achieve functional performance that's better than what we're used to. This is an example of a high temperature burner. It's used in the fuel refinement industry. The purpose of this burner is to burn messy fuel to, to create hydrogen. But in order to do this, we have to burn the fuel at extremely hot temperatures, hotter than the melting point of this metal part, which means that we can we need to rethink how we design our products in order to take advantage of these new capabilities. And with additive manufacturing, we're able to create shapes that we can then send cooling channels through to achieve that cooling necessary in order to create the fuels that we need. Another example is to rethink performance of conventionally manufactured parts. This is a lever that you would find on an aircraft. It's used to control the elevator pitch of an aircraft. When we make it conventionally, we cut it out of a block of metal and we constrain its shape. But when we take advantage of additive manufacturing, we're able to produce organic looking shapes that have the same strength as the conventionally manufactured part but have much less material, which means it weighs much less, which means our aircraft can fly further on the same amount of fuel. We're also able to mass customize products with additive manufacturing. We can individualize products. We can inexpensively, economically create things that have unique shapes. For example, this surgical aid. This is a cutting guide that a surgeon would use in a joint replacement therapy. It's been personalized exactly to the patient's anatomy, giving the doctor a more repeatable and consistent process, as well as reducing the inventory of parts that a medical device manufacturer needs to create in order to perform such sur surgeries. But not only do we have to change the way we think about design, we have to retool manufacturing. We have to introduce new technologies into our production environment 
in order to take advantage of all of these new shapes. And there are four primary technologies related to additive manufacturing. There are more than this, but these are the big four at the moment where we see companies being able to unleash the capabilities of additive. Powder bed fusion is a technology where we can control a very fine laser beam to melt very fine powder, whether that's metal, plastic, or ceramic, to create very intricate shapes. For example, this is that high temperature burner I spoke of earlier. You can see the very fine detail on the interior of the shape, very organic looking. This is a shape that you could not manufacture using conventional approaches. This is the type of capabilities that we're able to unleash when we use powder bed fusion. That surgical aid that I spoke of earlier, this is the patient's bone or a, an imitation bone that was scanned using Siemens technology and we created a digital model of someone's anatomy. This is the, this is the surgical cutting guide and as you can see, it matches perfectly. Totally individualized. We have the power to control a lot of precision with powder bed fusion. Jetting technology is a technology being pioneered by Hewlett Packard, HP, to produce parts out of plastic, functional parts. And the interesting thing about this technology is that you can produce 55,000 of these parts with that technology at the same cost of using injection molding. This is a type of technology that can start to scale up and replace tooling that is quite expensive and takes long lead times to be able to produce. Direct energy deposition is another interesting technology where we're able to use a laser to melt metal powder that is being blown out of, a, up, out of a nozzle. But what's really interesting about this technology is we can combine that additive manufacturing with CNC machining capabilities on the same machine tool. So now, not only can we 3D print and grow a product, but we can come in with the CNC tool and we can machine it to the surface finish that we need and the precise accuracy and tolerances. And we can do that in multi-axis. DMG Mori is a partner of Siemens that we're working with to unlock that capability. And then lastly, material extrusion. This is an interesting technology that was pioneered by Stratasys. We're working with Stratasys to take it to the next level where we can print, print composite parts. This is a, a carbon fiber reinforced nylon that has been printed in five axes by a robot. Now we can begin to automate the production of composite parts so we can introduce and replace metal parts with something that is functionally equivalent but much lighter. And we can scale this in size to be able to produce very large parts to introduce into products. But now that we've rethought our products and we've retooled our manufacturing, we can also begin to think about new business models. So instead of having physical inventory everywhere around the planet, why not have digital inventory and then be able to print on demand at the location where we need the products. This is the type of model that additive manufacturing is going to unleash on the market. We can start to mass customize and individualize as well as accelerate innovation cycles. If we no longer have to depend on a large supply chain for very expensive tooling like castings and injection molding, but we can print on demand. Now all of a sudden we're able to innovate product designs much more faster with tighter innovation loops. But 
there are some serious challenges when it comes to using additive manufacturing and production. And what we tend to see is a disruptive process chain, a disconnected process chain between every step of the process. We see disconnects between the different software applications that many companies try to use today, and we see disconnects between the different types of machinery that are used today. But we're solving this problem. We're offering up a completely connected process chain end to end. And we're doing that by introducing tools into our digital enterprise suite. We've introduced tools in the PLM environment, which allows us to design these very organic, bionic shapes. We're introducing tools that allow us to create these shapes automatically. All we need to do is introduce the design goals into the system and the computer software will create these shapes that achieve those objectives. We're adding tools to be able to simulate the performance of those new designs. So now that we have the confidence that that design is going to perform the way we expect it to in the production environment, as well as simulate the manufacturing process. So now that we know when it becomes time to make the part, we'll be able to make it the way we intended to. And tools to be able to prepare parts and designs for printing, all within the same system. We're also able to completely and totally integrate the automation capabilities of the production environment. When we, in order to industrialize additive manufacturing, we need to be able to work with 3D printers on the shop floor next to our mainstream production equipment. And Siemens offers a portfolio of totally integrated automation capabilities that will allow us to not only control and drive 3D printers, but also add those printers into our production environment so that now we're able to push information directly to those machines and collect the vast information that those machines are creating when they produce the physical parts. And we use this information to help us improve the designs of our products. And then in order to be able to control that production environment, we have manufacturing operations management capabilities, which allow us to manage the production orders, the scheduling, the instructions that the different operators on the shop floor will need to perform in order to make sure that jobs get done the way we expect them to. And lastly, I'd like to end on this point, which we announced yesterday. We recognize that in order for the manufacturing industry on a global scale to begin to take advantage of this technology, we have to create an environment that allows us to collaborate in an ecosystem that involves all of the different members of the manufacturing process. And what we're doing is we're creating a platform to enable collaboration between all of the different parties that are involved in additive manufacturing, from the designers who are designing parts, to the machine OEMs creating the equipment, to the companies that have the manufacturing services to produce the parts. And we're enabling this ecosystem to share knowledge and information so that the entire world will be able to benefit from the power of additive manufacturing. So with that, we have these examples and many more and some great stories about how we're helping to industrialize additive manufacturing today right over here behind us in the Additive Manufacturing Cube. Please feel free to come visit us. We would love to talk to you more about it. Thank you for joining us. Aaron Frankel, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and if you need more information,